How's it going guys? We are back with another Anthem video. So today I had a couple of things I wanted to talk about. We have the passion that's releasing today at 3pm to 5pm so I'm getting this out as early as possible. I also wanted to talk about some loot progression and some inscriptions that pretty much baffled me as to how they work. Um, the whole concept of gear score just pretty much goes out the window. I do understand why they've done it this way but we'll get into that as the video goes on. First of all, the patch notes was extremely extensive, so I could have made a 20 minute video just going through those, but instead I decided to pretty much pick out the important parts, and I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to go read the full patch notes. But these I believe are pretty much the important aspects of the patch notes, stuff that you care about and stuff that you want to check out. So, respawn restrictions have been removed. Respawn timers are now based on the activity a player is in. Crit path, agent missions, and other non-end game missions now have a respawn timer of 10 seconds. Strongholds, legendary contracts and other endgame missions now have a respawn timer of 30 seconds. The respawn timer free play remains unchanged. So essentially, where you would go down and you couldn't get back up and you'd have to wait for your teammates to come and get you and if they didn't get you, you'd pretty much have to quit the game and come back. That's no longer going to be a thing as of today between 3 and 5 p.m. The patch will pretty much reset that, so hopefully that won't break anything else. Loot changes. Common white and uncommon green drops will no longer appear if, for players that are level 30. Blues, however, will still be in the loot pool. Do keep that in mind, so don't go to Reddit and start screaming. The vault is no longer accessible from the forge. This change was made to improve performance. So it'll be interesting to see how this is done now. Will you be able to hold a set number of weapons? And if that's the case, this is pretty good. I like this fact because the vault was goddamn long to load and it was really clunky. Hopefully this will improve loading times, this will improve performance, and hopefully the transition between the screens will be almost instant. Players may now launch an expedition from anywhere within the launch bay and Fort Tarsis. Love it. PS4 LED lights will now change based on the javelin being used. Yeah, I know I said they're going to be important patch notes, but I'm a PS4 player, this is important to me. The message opened a cortex to track the legionnaire challenges will no longer pop up after completing the appropriate challenges. I've done this. Hopefully this will no longer be a thing, because, oh god it's annoying. We have some stronghold updates. Fixed an issue that would cause players to get stuck at the entrance to the sewers in the Temple of Scar stronghold. Good stuff. This pretty much prevented anyone from going in there. The monitor's health has been greatly reduced in the heart of Ray's stronghold. Finally, I can actually go in there and actually bother doing this, because that boss's health on GM1 was astronomical. It pretty much drained all life and soul out of me. Good job. Titans are now generally easier to defeat. In general, they take less damage, the lesser ones don't go immune and such forth. So overall, they've been completely overhauled, they take less damage, and and now there's more chance of actually priming them to deal even more damage. So good stuff there, I think that's a really good change because the immunity of Titans was a bit too much. Damage and item scaling changes. Adjusted the damage of scaling secondary damage sources. These now scale with average item power. This will allow these damage sources to better scale in the Grandmaster difficulties. This will increase the scaling of the following. Melee, combo, ultimate damage, status effects, and item procs. For example, Yvenius Thunder. Item scaling has changed to better reflect the actual power of the item based on its rarity. This is applied to all items retroactively. Players will see power of their items go up. So no need to go out and collect new stuff. The items you have will take the boost. The ultimate ability bar will no longer appear full at the start of a mission when it isn't actually full. This is actually a really good change because it's fooled me once and fooled me twice and it's really annoying. There's a host of buffs to Colossus animations which will allow it to faster recover when it crashes or recover from stagger animations and things like this. At present if you have a shield and you stagger, the 5 seconds that you get from the buff you waste about 3 seconds just coming out of the stagger animation and it pretty much gives you like 2 seconds to 1 second of actual uptime for any buff that you have on that inscription. Well this is hopefully going to reduce it down to maybe a second or half a second and give you a bit more of a window to using those stuff. As a Colossus I appreciate this. Item balance updates. Increase the base health of Windwall and Bulwark Point to provide better scaling in higher difficulties. Currently Windwall goes down quicker than it goes up. The duration of these has been reduced to 20 seconds, down from 60 seconds. Well that's fine because, like I said, the moment you put Windwall up it was going down anyway, it never lasted 60 seconds. Burst Mortar's damage has been increased to 300, up from 145, and its cooldown has been reduced to 6 seconds, down from 10 seconds. 
Its description has also been fixed. Flat Cannon's damage has been increased to 42, up from 30. Battlecry's description has been updated to explain that it also reduces the resistance of affected targets. Ray Strike's damage has been increased to 250, up from 200, and it will now apply elemental effect to targets based on the active aura. Note, description text for Ray Strike will be updated in 1.0.4, so though the description won't set it, the effect will be in effect. Masterwork item balances update increase the base damage of the following masterwork weapons. Rolnar's Blaze, Rolling Carnage, Cycle of Pain, The Last Stand, Glorious Result, Insult and Injury, Sentinel Vengeance, Gnosta's Balm, Vessa's Surprise, Soothing Touch, Renewed Courage, and Artinian's Gambit. All of these will be having their base damage increased to make them more worthwhile using. And that's pretty much, in my opinion, the important aspects of the patch notes. If you found something that I missed that you think was relatively important, uh, leave in the comment section below and we can discuss and whatnot. But yeah, so that's the patch notes. So with the patch notes out of the way, next I wanted to talk about loot progression, and it's become an even bigger mess than it originally was. So you see this image on screen now, minor primary and secondary, major secondary and primary, and epic secondary and primary. And this shows you what items and what perks can drop for each rarity of the equipment. With Uncommon having one minor primary, Masterworks having the ability to have minors and majors, whereas and Legendary having major and epic perks. So this, up until this point, is pretty clear. What's not clear based on this image is what perks can drop in a minor and a primary slot. What perks can drop in a secondary and primary loot pool? Are they all the same? Are they not the same? What does it entail? None of this information is revealed. None of this information is available for us to look at. For all we know, both of these pools, secondary and primary, are literally the same pool and it just pulls one of them out two of them out and sticks it onto the weapon. Again, it's really confusing, it's really silly the way it's done, but that is the way it is. But we do have some guidance. Recently the devs released this inscription guide and in here it says how are inscriptions applied. We have the following buckets of inscriptions. As we saw in the image, we have minor primary secondary, major primary secondary and epic primary secondary. The lower the tier, the less impact the inscriptions will have. The higher the tier, the higher the impact. As an example, Minery Primary can modify weapon damage from 5 to 25%, but Major Secondary Inscription to weapon damage will modify it from 25% to 175%. Now I've seen the Epic rolls up to 250%, which is pretty damn awesome. But that's all we pretty much have in terms of guidance. We don't know what perks will drop here. They make a specific mention as secondary perk for weapon damage. Can it only drop in a secondary pool? Can it drop in the primary pool? We simply don't know. But something else that came out of this, which was crazy, right? Now, just hear me out, is a question by Nizdog. I'm curious if Javelin specific components, Epic, Masterwork, Legendary, are working as intended. Are they supposed to only have access to the less useful inscription pools? Teleska, a biowork producer, came on board to say, the trade-off is meant to be, you take Javelin specific components, for base health, you take universal components for the higher primary inscriptions. It's meant to be a trade-off. Now this is completely and utterly fucked, because uh, let's be realistic here, this just basically means that gear score doesn't matter, right? So if my epic has like god tier perks on it, but it's got low health for example, if I'm a storm, I want to go full glass cannon, I'm better off going with epic components instead of masterwork and legendary. It's that simple. I'm just going to get better perks because the universal perks are better. And considering there are no universal perks available in Masterwork and Legendary, it just means that a 450 powered javelin can completely and utterly out decimate a 500 powered javelin. I mean, this isn't right. This gear score system is just broken. And I was talking to a friend yesterday and they just said, well, you know, the gear score is just a number, but it shouldn't just be a number. It should signify your power output and I've known the patch notes that they're raising the levels and they're raising the base damage of stuff to signify to help stuff do better damage but when it comes to components this is a real big issue he continues by the way we are buffing nearly all the universal components in an upcoming patch so now based on that com based on that knowledge universal components are going to be on par 
are going to be better than Masterwork or Legendary Components. An epic perk, right? This is crazy. Why would I? Why would I not want to use a Javelin-specific component that is a Masterwork or Legendary over Epic? But if I want full glass cannon, so far Epic is the way to go. He continues. So they won't feel so weak if you don't happen to roll a good inscription on them. So now they're having their armor and shield boosted as well. Even less reason to use Masterwork and Legendary. He continues. Also, spoiler. Masterwork versions of Universals are rolling out, so they will be more viable choice. Now, I'm not sure if this is rolling out today, as in with the 3 to 5 pm patch that's coming out GMT, but if they are, this just makes the complete usage of Masterwork, Legendary, Javelin specific components even less desirable. There are certain perks on those Javelin specific ones that are quite nice, like for example, on Colossus, you have the one that when you slam down, you create an earthquake, you have the other one where you gain 300% shield damage, you've got others where it, for 5 seconds you get 60% damage boost, these are nice, and these will increase your damage, but on the grand scheme of things, if those universal now masterwork components are actually going to overall give you a better more steady DPS and make your gameplay more refined, I mean this whole system is completely fucked, really it's just completely broken. I don't understand why in, why they would go down this route. It, it makes no sense. I mean, really, I hope they are looking at this. Um, I mean, I think they need to uh, explain this a bit better because in its current form, universal components are the way to go if they're going to give you a non-penalty, non-defining boost. So if a universal masterwork component that should be available today or in the next patch, unless the perks and the damage increases and the rewards are that good? I don't see any reason to use the Javelin specific ones, but we will soon see. But as of right now, if you're looking for a glass cannon build, epic ones are the way to go. Of course, that's going to probably change um, today with the patch, but it's crazy that this was even the case. And I understand that the intention was that you had two ways of going, but if that's the case, what's the point of a gear score? I mean, there is literally no point to a gear score. If that's the path they wanted to go, gear score just goes out the door because a 450 or a 440 can absolutely cripple a 500 in terms of damage. Sure, the 500 is going to survive longer, but in terms of maximum output, the 1.2, 1.3 million damage that we're seeing, that is probably done with epic gear. So, uh, yeah. You let me know in the comment section below what you think, guys. Um, I think it's pretty bad, but hopefully... We'll get more of a understanding with the new releasing Universal Masterwork components and we can maybe start comparing those with what we've got with the Javelin specific components. And once we start getting that comparison, we can start to see how the weights actually work. Well, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. And until the next video.